Hello, welcome back to the Legend of Nobunaga. We're still on Chapter 3, The Subjugation of Mino, which ends in uh, 1567. It's 1564 now, so there must be something more in store. And here it is, it's Breakthrough at Sekigahara. So, I don't think this battle is historical at all, I think they just made it up. Um, it's supposed to represent how Nobunaga allied with the Azai clan, and for some reason they decided to make a whole level out of it rather than just showing it as a cutscene. So you have to fight a random battle against the Saito clan, which I guess is okay. Ichi will marry Nagamasa Azai. What? No, no, not him! She must have a guard. Who will accompany her on the road to Awumi? No! No! What's wrong, monkey? Be careful or your new wife will get angry. So everyone wanted to score with Uichi, basically, and they're, uh, they're pretty annoyed that they're not going to get to do that. Poor Nene, monkey's wife. Without victory, victory and even more victory, we'll never move ahead. Let's get moving! Right, Nobunaga wants some victory, so we're going to have to do it. So, as I said, this battle is pretty much, well, non-historical, but it represents a historical event of the marriage between Oichi and the lord of the Azai clan, Nagamasa Azai, who we'll be seeing shortly, I think. Here's Oichi. She must be about 20 years old at this stage. A strong ally. Nagamasa Azai is a good man, and he is famous for his good looks. No idea if that's true. You'll be happy there. Brother, you... You have taken flight in search of something unknown. I can no longer overtake you. I guess... This was fated. Ichi... I understand. For your sake... I will go to Azai. So there you have it. She was actually already married at this stage. We spotted a force from Mino lying in wait a few leagues ahead. What? Now ah, we're being Ambrose. ambushed. <laughs> yeah, she was married to Katsuye Shibata, one of Nobunaga's generals. Uh, she was sort of married to him to make up for the fact that he rebelled uh, at the beginning of the game, as All we right. saw. Let's begin. Time for another war council then. Our scouts have come back with the following reports. This ambush wasn't very good, obviously, because we have time to set up camp. <laughs> start this war council so this ambush is taking a long time to happen let's have a look our objective is to safely deliver Lady Oichi to Lord Azai we will lose if we allow ourselves to be blocked so we basically have to get to the top of the map with the Oichi Azai force. Our destination is located there's here. Nagamasa Azai he has a very cool headpiece on his helmet as you can see I'll talk more about him in a moment Lord Nobunaga, I guarantee that I will protect the Lady Oichi. No one will get close to her. My lord, you can't trust a monkey. <laughs> Allow me to guard Lady Oichi. So here, her, her ex-husband and the guy he's trying to score with her are both battle. offering to help her out. Well, might as well let them, I guess. If they're going to be passionate about saving her, then that's, uh, that's a good thing. So we can see Oichi is, uh, is here on the map. Uh, you're automatically given her as a unit, and you can't control her, she just walks around uh, of her own accord, which, well, during the battle we'll see actually uh, catches me out a little bit. The enemy have a couple of units deployed up ahead of me, there's a village, uh, Tatsuo Saito himself, that's not, I said that last time, Tatsuo Saito is also here on the field, and up at the top left here there's some strange circles which represent where we're supposed to go. So I need to uh, start thinking about what sort of units I'm going to plop down. Fourth to take Nobunaga Oda, because this is a major battle. I decide, um, well, I was wondering what sort of layout to uh, to have, because I'm allowed five units, so I could either have three on the right, one on the left, or two on the right and two on the left, and uh, I, don't know, I, had, I had to make some decisions about that. But uh, while we see these decisions, let me talk a little bit about um, the historical chronology, because some sources I've seen say that this, the marriage between Azai and Oichi takes place after Nobunaga captures Mino uh, in a uh, well after 1567. Uh, whereas here in the game it's saying it's happening in 1564, and the story I'm familiar with also tells it it's happening in 1564. So I don't know. 
I guess those sources may have been making a mistake. I, I'm not, not sure. I've seen it in a couple of places. It doesn't really matter, obviously. One of the reasons it was probably 1564 is that there was a, uh, a slightly complicated scenario between the Azai clan and the Oda clan. Because Azai also wanted to capture Mino, that uh, the Oda clan was invading. So there was sort of like a race to see who could destroy the Saito first. Because the Saito were very weak at this stage and everybody knew it. But, um,. I'll tell the full story of the Azai clan during the battle. So you can see I finally went for a full ca ca sorry, cavalry force on the right hand side and a uh, well, a cavalry infantry mixed force on the left hand side. So the conditions of the battle are basically saving Oichi and Nobunaga as usual. Nothing too difficult. It tells me to head for the enemy to reduce their momentum. No idea what that's about, but <laughs> I decided to order Nobunaga to charge. You might have noticed I also ordered my uh, my left wing to move left into the river. That's because I thought there would be an item there. Understood. With this, we can all concentrate. The on game likes putting items behind you. Our council is at an end. You all know what you have to do. Now go. It just happened to me in a few of the minor battles, so I uh, I wanted them to check down in that little corner. <clears throat> I don't think there was anything there, <laughs> if I remember correctly. Oh well, let's do it. Break through the enemy forces. And deliver Oichi to Nagamasa. Follow me. <laughs> the ultimate postman. We can do this, guys. So Oichi basically just starts running up the map on our own accord, and I have to uh, try and take out the enemy units on the way. And uh, wasn't too difficult. These guys ran away, which is quite annoying. I think they were supposed to be horse archers or something. Anyway, um, so let me talk about the Azai, the guy, well, the clan this. we are selling Oichi off to as a political marriage. Azai is, at this stage in history, uh, on a rebound. The Azai clan was almost destroyed just a few years ago at this stage by another clan called the Rokaku. Uh, the Rokaku clan uh, pretty much dominate, well, dominated the Omi province, which is where the Azai clan is. It's just to the west of the Mino province we're currently invading. Uh, and the as I clan almost surrendered actually, they were about to surrender control and become a vassal of the Rokaku clan. But then uh, the leader of the Azai clan basically gave his son control of the clan because he was aware he wasn't very competent at, at leading their people. So he gave young Nagamasa Azai, he's only like 15 years old when he took command, uh, this clan to control. And luckily for them Nagamasa turned out to be pretty damn good at uh, leading the men. And he uh, turned things around and the Azai clan basically conquered the Rokaku clan, but not quite. And there was a, a big critical failing, because Azai could have pushed on and con completely uh, unified Omi, his home province. But instead, he chose, just before the events we're seeing here, to try and attack Azai. You can see here on the screen, Oichi uh, ran really far ahead of me, and I was left behind while I was concentrating on the other battle. So I had to uh, cast Gale, the movement buff, and race after her so she didn't go and kill herself up in that mountain pass. But anyway, uh, yes, the Nagamasa Azai tries to attack Mino and he is defeated, essentially. He doesn't do very well. Yeah. Well, actually, that's probably a harsh way of saying it. He was defeated strategically. His army wasn't defeated. But what happened was, while he was campaigning in Mino, the Rokaku clan had a sort of resurgence. Like retainers, the Rokaku clan gathered together some troops and started an uprising in Omi. And he had, he had to uh, retreat from the Mino campaign in order to deal with that. So although he wasn't really defeated, his his actual plan didn't work, and he ended up making big problems for himself as a result of it. So you could say he was defeated in that regard. So he ends up going back to uh, Omi to deal with the Rokaku clan uprising. This gives Nobunaga his chance to invade Mino and uh, eventually capture it completely. So it is very favourable for uh, Nobunaga that the Rokaku clan uh, did their cheeky uprising. Of course, Nobunaga will uh, later completely destroy the Rokaku clan. Because uh, they're in the way. Omi is a very strategic province because it's between Mino and Kyoto. And the goal of every major warlord in Japan at this stage is to get to Kyoto. Uh, what they ideally want is to capture the area around Kyoto, there are a few provinces around it, apart, so and then easily. get the Emperor to give them a mandate to basically conquer the entire country. Because with the Emperor's mandate to conquer the country, they'll be able to raise troops very easily and legitimize their personal ambitions. So all the major barons and warlords are trying to get this, uh, this mandate from the Emperor. 
Uh, and the, the only real way to do it is to occupy Kyoto and keep it safe. So you earn the uh, the Emperor's trust. Because at this stage, Kyoto is like, uh, it's really messy. Uh, there was lots of uprisings, lots of strife, constant invasions and counter invasions of Kyoto. And the, uh, the Emperor's house had really uh, lost its power. And there was lots of death and destruction going on in the capital. So there was very much a need for one of the territorial barons to come and just clean things up, protect Kyoto and bring them peace. And uh, Nobunaga fancied himself for that goal. And that in many ways is the true reason he invaded Mino. In the game it very much presents it as he just wanted to increase his personal power by invading Mino because it was a uh, strategically useful province. But the real value of Mino is that it gives him access to Omi, and if he can ally successfully with Azai, then he can move through Omi and go to Kyoto. And that means getting a chance to capture Kyoto and uh, have the Emperor under his finger. Now is our chance! Nobunaga pretty much at this stage fancies himself for the new Shogun. Doesn't really uh, portray it in the game, but historically it was around this time that he decided uh, he had the the ability to take over the entire country and started thinking about that seriously, rather than just capturing his local area. So it's very important for them to ally with the SI in order to uh, be able to get to Kyoto. <laughs> they don't even suspect That's the true strategic here. value of the Open Province and uh, ultimately the value of the Mino Province as well. You can see I got ambushed here by these uh, these ninja forces which just came out of the river, but they uh, they didn't prove very effective. I basically just spammed see. them with some uh, some heavy attacks and they, they went down pretty easy. Uh, the problem was that while I was fighting these guys, the Oichi ran off right in front of my formation. You can see her running across the bottom of the screen now. She runs off on her own, and uh, that's going to be a problem because right about now, Tatsuoki Saito, <laughs> Tatsuoki, Tatsuoki Saito, for God's sake, uh, suddenly rushes north up the river towards where Uichi is. So this was a big problem for me because it meant uh, Takachira was way like out of the way. He wasn't going to help very much. And Nobunaga and Katsuya were distracted by these like dwindling ninjas which were wandering around in the river. So Uichi was a little bit in trouble. Uh, especially since Tatsuoki Psycho whatever. Tatsuoki Psycho is uh gonna be a pretty strong unit because he's the enemy commander. You don't win by defeating him like in most battles. So I just have to uh, make sure Uichi doesn't die, but because she's gonna get caught up in the combat, I'm gonna have to defeat him anyway, which is uh, well, fairly annoying. Oh well. We'll have to just deal with that. Nobunaga, Here he is. Today is the day I defeat you. The man himself, Nagamasa Azai, that Uichi is being sent to marry, was uh, very much responsible for the um, for the fighting in his province. Like he could have let the Rokaku clan take over, and in theory that would have unified Oumi, but. Uh, and he was offered the chance to do this. Uh, he was offered a opportunity to marry to into the pieces. Rokoku clan, and this would basically link the Azai and Rokoku clans and bring effective peace to Umi, but he refused this marriage and began military campaign against them. And he was successful, uh, but he would never unify Umi. The Rokoku clan would still be there when uh, when Nobunaga arrived, the Rokoku clan was still there. And uh, when the Azai clan ultimately turns on Nobunaga, the Rokoku clan was still active. So. They never really uh, like succeeded in pacifying Umi, which is unfortunate for Umi. Oh well. I don't have too much to say about Oichi herself. She uh, she's already really famous for having uh, children who were politically significant. Like her three children, they were called the Azai Three the uh, because they were children of the Azai clan after this marriage. And uh, these three children were famous because they all married uh, very high political figures. They all married into the families of daimyo, the uh, families of the territorial barons of the area. So that's basically her uh, historical achievement was to create these people who went on to be uh, key links between some of the daimyo later on, including the uh, the child of Hideyoshi Hashiba. I guess I should say Tokichiro. Uh, yeah, Tokichiro Kinoshita. One of his children will, uh, will marry one of Uichi's children later on. So in many ways, his fantasy of marrying Uichi portrayed in the game is ever okay. so slightly fulfilled historically by her, their children hooking up. Oh well. There's some sort of poetic value Fear to that. Not. So you can see I'm absolutely spamming Tatsuki's <laughs> Tatsuki Saito with uh, everything I have. This damn Hino no Hino. 
Akinino shows up and uh, starts really bashing on Tokuchiro Kinoshita, so I have to try and block, and he actually takes quite heavy damage. It seems that Hinonari is quite a powerful unit. Uh, he keeps using these charge attacks, and when I press block, it just says failure up at the top, and I take heavy damage, but luckily I have so many units just around here. Uichi's in there somewhere. What I need to her to do is to run out of this mess and escape to the Azai territory, but she doesn't. She's sort of trapped in there. So I am forced to destroy them. I start spamming some of my abilities to do that. Oichi's taken a, a, a bit of damage, but she's still uh, in good shape. What I was doing right now is waiting for Nobunaga's heal ability to uh, to respawn, reload, so that I could use it on Oichi just to get her a little bit safer. Because if she took like one big charge attack on one of the enemy units, she might actually be destroyed at this stage. So I wanted to uh, just make sure I wasn't going to lose at this late stage in the battle. I was really convinced that there was an item up in the top right hand corner of the map because uh, there, there was a big lake there that I didn't bother investigating and I thought there's such a huge area of the map with nothing on it there must be items up there because they wouldn't be there but uh, I didn't have time to go and check because I was busy uh, defeating these units and Oichi's just going to quickly run off and end the battle the second I defeat them so no uh, I didn't have a chance to get the item so I didn't bother trying which is unfortunate so this obviously isn't actually the final battle of Chapter 3, so I very much <laughs> became aware that there are actually more than one decisive battle per chapter. For some reason I was assuming there's only one, but uh, there are multiple decisive battles per chapter. Um, just as a reminder, the battles are split up into minor, normal and decisive battles, and usually when you do a decisive battle it changes story elements quite a lot and uh, advances the story. You can see I sent Nobunaga just to... <laughs> as a rear guard in case any enemy unit suddenly popped out. But uh there you go. The battle was completed. We've made it this far. Alright, now we move to Nagamasa Azai. Lucky Nagamasa. So we're gonna see Nagamasa Azai. He's gonna be pretty young at this stage, probably the same age as Oichi in his young early twenties. So it's a pretty good matchup I think. Oichi was a, uh, a very good wife. Only just got rank S. Yeah she was a very uh, devoted mother and devoted wife. So Azai's got a pretty good girl in this little deal. Also, his uh, getting an alliance with Nobunaga is uh, is quite useful for him. It's going to help him fight the Rokaku. Although he does have already a, a big strategic alliance with uh, I think it's the Asakura clan. There's there's another clan nearby, I think north of the Azai, which he has a very very long-standing alliance. They have generations in fact, and that's uh, been keeping the Azai clan alive for quite a long time. So he already has one big uh, major alliance, but the up-and-coming Oda Nobunaga is going to be a, a great guy to have on side as well. You saw I got a whole bunch of random items there, they weren't that good. Funky, uh, that, that female outfit was quite cool. I don't have many female outfits at the moment, so my female generals don't have much to wear. Take care, of Ichi. I cannot believe my good fortune. I am truly honoured. I swear to you, I will care for the Lady Oichi. I shall do everything. Everything in my power to repay your trust, my lord. How disgusting. Yeah. I don't see anything wrong with him either. He's so dreamy. So he seems like a pretty good guy. He says he's pretty happy to have this marriage. So it seems Nobunaga's made himself a pretty funky ally. The Oda Force gained successive victories over the Saito clan. They moved to attack Inabayama Castle, one of Mino's major fortifications. In response, Tatsuoki Saito positioned his men to defend Inabayama Castle, a strong position that had never before been taken. He swore to wipe out the Oda forces. I believe it's true that it had never been taken. Inabayama was a very big and very fortified area, and it was fortified even more as Nobunaga All arrived. Right. What's our first move? So that's the end of this episode of Legend of Nobunaga. We've completed another chapter. My lord, there is one here who wishes Oh, and we to gained a, a new officer as well. Pretty good. Let's see who he is. I am Uchisato Kamo. I am young, but I have purpose, and I will give my life for you, Lord Nobunaga. My forces would be strengthened with strategies such as yours. Not a name I recognize. I for your aid. Probably just some sort of generic uh, samurai. My lord. No particular historical significance. I only really want to use the historically significant Lord, characters. This is the That's just how I roll. Situation. And we're sent back to the map. And if we're lucky, we should have a new battle available for the Siege of Inabayama Castle. 
Yep, there it is, and we get Ichisetu Gamo as one of our new officers. So Inabina, sorry, Inabayama is now possible. It's 1567, we've advanced three years, and it's time for Mino to finally be uh, joined into the Oda clan by force. Uh, Inabayama was a very fortified area, as uh, Saito really put all of his money down on Inabayama holding out. So Nobunaga's going to have to pull out something special to capture Inabayama, and he will pull out something special, or more accurately, uh, Tokushiro Kinoshito pull out something special, which was uh, a big theme of uh, Nobunaga's rise to glory, was that Tokushiro Kinoshita, or Hideyoshi Hashiba as he'd later be known, would always do something special and uh, turn the tides, but I'm going to talk about more, talk about that more in the next battle, because I think uh, it needs to be said how much influence Tokichiro Kinoshita had over Nobunaga's campaign. I don't think the game makes it clear just how important he was, and that without him, Nobunaga would have had far, far less success oh, for many, many different reasons and on many, many different fronts. Uh, so he was, he was a very special character, and he was made more special by the fact that he was an Ashigaru, but I'm getting ahead of myself, I'll talk about that next time. So, in this episode we saw Oda allied to the Azai clan, a historically important event happening in 1564, when he married his sister Oichi to Nagamasa Azai, and we are going to see uh, this marriage come back into the spotlight later on in the historical tale, because this marriage will end up being of uh, quite uh, important, uh, important in the power plays. That happened just a few years after the capture of Mino, so I'm pretty sure that's going to be mentioned uh, fairly heavily. And Oichi was uh, was destined eventually to return to marrying Katsuie Shibata. So something's going to have to go sour in between, and well, we'll, we'll see what happens, of course. I don't want to spoil it. Uh, so look forward to the Siege of Inabayama Castle and the conclusion of Chapter 3 next time on The Legend of Nobunaga.